Wow. The Telegraph. Imagine that. You don't see this very often by any establishment media let. And I'm not sure who this Alistair Heath is, but he created an article in the Telegraph, which is out of the UK, United Kingdom, with a headline, This crisis has been caused by arrogant central banks. The market has become distorted and corrupted, sending out misleading price signals. Wow, a little bit of honesty right there. It's like, refreshing, no? I think so. It was Fr Friedrich, oh, okay, he, he understands Austrian economics, so that oh, explains that, right? It was Friedrich von Hayek, the great Austrian economist who explained just how central the price system is to capitalism and our civilization's astonish, astonishing prosperity. I mean, just look around. Anyone that questions, you know, even as much as people like to hate on the U.S. for their, and I, I'm, I'm totally there as far as like central planning and mega corporations, all this stuff, but the concept how that country was built, the concept was, you know, even though it still had slight aspects of mysticism built in, baked into the cake, in the Constitution, right, of supposedly limiting your deity, the fact that it still recognized a deity, it was wrong, yes, but this was done in, what, 1700s, you know, so, yeah. But the whole premise was the respect of the individual, the rights of the individual, private property, and allowing humans to flourish, to benefit or lose at their own whims, at their own, based on their own decisions. That's how the U.S. was set up. If you understand the philosophy by, behind the United States, there's a reason why that allowed it to become the most powerful, dominant, I mean, to the tune of even the next closest country, such as China, that's got a population five times more. It still has taken, and, and they've got the ability to central. They now have all the tricks and the tools of the trade that they've stolen or implemented or come up with them themselves to compete. Everyone in the world, the central planners, have, have realized that they can come up with their own models to compete, but... The United States still, even with all the cronyism, all this, it's still the most prosperous country on the planet. And that's, that's not by accident. Proper philosophy. If you look around to the most prosperous countries, it's because they are the most free socially and economically. Even though that, yes, I mean, even if they're still not truly free, which I recognized wholly. But it does at least show you on the scale the freer people are, the more prosperous, the more self self reliable and self sustaining they could be. Anyway, the fact that goods, services, assets, money, time, ideas, and risk all come with a price attached allows resources to be allocated remarkably effectively. That is key. That's the key, that's the most important thing for all the people that don't understand capitalism. The most important thing about capitalism, or definitely one of the most important aspects of capitalism, is, yes, the price mechanism, which it's not centrally planned. It's, if you allow humans to, without, you know, controlling or dictating them, there will, that balance will come automatically because people will only pay so much for a product or service. I mean, you can't imagine, I mean, I can't even delve into it now because that's like a, why it can't be done in, in a short little video, right? But yeah, macroeconomics and as well, well I'll read the article because they do kind of touch on that anyways. An increase in the price of oil means that demand has gone up which encourages producers to invent new ways to ex of extracting more of it. A reduction in that price in the price of corn means that there is too much of it and the fact that it becomes less profitable to sell it encourages producers to exit the market. Adam Smith described this, which is Adam Smith was basically you know someone that actually understood fundamental macro and free market economics. But Adam Smith described this as an the invisible hand that aligned the self-interest of individuals coordinating their actions for the greater good. So yeah, so 
that that covers it perfect but you see central planners manipulators and propagandists will try to completely twist distort that reality so what they're saying is the invisible hand so me doing something in my own self interest or 10 people all doing things for their own self-interest, but with the recognition that they need other people to cooperate for that whole system to flourish, but they place their own central, cent, personal interest first. That invisible hand is, even though they're only thinking of themselves predominantly for what they can gain and benefit from that, that trade, that barter, they also recognize if it's done voluntarily that everybody wins. So, I mean, it goes back to this example has been used a million times over. If you've got a pen and I've got a dollar, you prefer the pen, I prefer the dollar. We make that exchange voluntarily. We both walk away from that transaction considering ourselves we won. But in reality, I benefit you by you getting the pen. You benefit me by getting the dollar. So we both benefit. So I help myself first, but you were also helped at the same time. But see, that's the thing. Collectivists, central planners will try to twist that as if the greater good means that you're supposed to sacrifice. No, the premise is I was the one that gained the benefit first, but others benefit as a result. That's the trick. That's the trick. That is the trick. Central planners try to try their best to distort that. That's their that's their ace up their card. Is they they try to twist and distort. And if they're good propagandists. A person that doesn't truly understand the fundamentals or grasp what Adam Smith was truly talking about, if they don't go to read Adam Smith's books or, or you know, what, what all the, they, they will just believe whatever their central planners or their so-called economists tell them. But that's the reality of it. No central planning involves just if I want something, you want something. And, and because we do this, voluntarily trade or if i own a business you know and i want to make pencils and you are, own a rubber plant and you own a wood plant you own the company that makes the steel the band that goes around we all come together but we're all doing it for our own self-interest for our own profit motive but yes look at how many people benefit f as a result of that that is key to understanding what the invisible hand what adam smith or H people like hayek were talking about that's key. Don't let central planners and narrative makers try to twist and distort that reality. That's really what we're talking about. There's no such thing as a genuine greater good that people should work toward. It's just, yes, people will benefit. <laughs> News alert. People will benefit by doing things voluntarily instead of using force. Whoa. Shocking revelation. I know, but hey, it's been known for quite a long time. Your media propagandists and your political overlords, they don't want you to know that. It's the last thing they want you to know. The free market makes mistakes, of course, but it fails far less frequently than any alternative way of allocating resources. Of course. The only other way is to direct activity, activity centrally, an extreme version of central planning. But that, but that is a recipe for catastrophe, which has been shown throughout all of history. Every country... Every geographical region that has some central planning authority dictating and controls the lives of their subjects, citizens, serfs, or slaves, yeah, it never works out that good, right? Of course it doesn't. The minor benefits that are attained pale in comparison to those that would be achieved in a free market situation with people allowed to flourish freely, with freedom at the base core of the philosophy People tend to do better. Once again, another shock and revelation. Tragically, while policymakers supposedly understand this, they have spent years undermining the price system because central planners, they think they know it all. They think they can. Adam Smith understood. You don't know it all. It takes a million, billion, everybody individually doing their thing. And they don't even understand it. But that's the thing. You can't set your plan. The invisible hand isn't someone trying to control it. It's just the market forces at work. Spent years undermining the price system, making it less useful and efficient. 
planting the seeds for one crisis after another. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, think of how many interventions has happened even just since 2008. QE1, QE2, QE3, bailing out banks, bailing out auto, automotive manufacturers, you know, aerospace industries, you know, subsidies, tariffs, blockades to trade practices. I mean, this, and it's just make things... Yes, it makes things worse. Of course it does. <laughs> the current market turmoil, which has pushed the FTSE 100 down 22% from its recent peak, sent yields into a spin and turbocharged gold, is one consequence of all of this. Far from being a manifestation of what the left describes as neoliberalism, liberalism, liberalism, you know, trying to bring Milton Friedman into that equation, right? Milton, Milton, Milton. Should have never played ball with any of those people. Should have never played nice with them because you see what they did. I feel I feel bad, bad for Milton. But you know what? You should never sell your principles because, yeah. Look at what they have to... Look at what they can do to you afterwards if you do. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Far from being a manifestation of what the left describes as neoliberalism, it is primary primarily a failure of statism whoa like i said this is the telegraph this is an established media outlet so there are some people that recognize that they have to speak out i mean this gentleman taking the chance of talking about this stuff yeah he, he, he risks a lot of backlash for doing so proud of him for standing up to stand in the truth the reason we need more of you the triggers for the recent turmoil were the slowdown in China and emerging markets. Reduced the demand for oil, energy, and commodities. A group of economies that were propped up directly and indirectly thanks to domestic and global monetary easing and other interventions followed, following the Great Recession of 2007 to 2009. As a result, many of the problems besetting those, these countries were not tackled and just grew worse. It was always a certainty that reality would eventually catch up with them and that bad Debts would have to be written off and resources real, reallocated to more productive uses. Another name for that process is a recession, or at least, in the case of China, a slowdown. <laughs> yeah, people have to understand when you're doing something wrong, you have to, can't pat the back and say, yeah, keep going along. Keep doing the same thing, even though it's going to fuck everything up. No, a recession is basically, yeah, people have to suffer the consequences of their negative actions. That's simple. And not that it has to be superimposed by a central authority. Natural forces should allow be allowed to play it out, play out, so that, that the people that make these malinvestments that do the central plan they have to suffer the consequences for doing so. No one else has to do anything towards them. It's not like you or I have to go with pitchforks and say, "All right, I, just when they fuck up, allow them to suffer the consequences." That's it. No magic. No tricks. Not everything that is going wrong can be blamed on politi politicians or central bankers, of course. The private sector can also make spontaneous errors. But the U.S., U.K., European, and Japanese economies would not be in the position they are today had the price system been allowed to, clearly, to clear freely and had policymakers allowed more of the malinvestments of the past to be liquidated more quickly. Exactly. Kicking the can down the road can help ease an adjustment, but it can also allow denial to set in. Tragically, the latter is what appears to have happened in many economies and markets around the world. Exactly. You know, you know, you know, helicopter parents, you think you're protecting your kids by fucking walking them to school every day or standing over top of them or controlling everything they do. Well, no, you're just creating a bunch of kids that will never learn to stand on their own. Or if they do, the amount of shit they'll have to wade through afterwards, the obstacles you're creating for them, the barriers... You're just making things worse. You're building that wall up for them. If you protect them in the here and now, it's because you. if you climb that ladder for them, they're never going to build up the strength and stamina to do it on their own. The free market. The invisible hand. That's what we're talking about. That has to play out naturally. Central planning does not, does not work. You know, for a short time frame while the people are pulling the levers and people are still confused and, and, and scrambling and, and trying to figure it can work for a very short time frame but in the long run the long run game 
the decisions of millions and billions of people independently thinking and carrying out their own preferences, their own edicts, their own actions, that's what's truly going to dictate how economic and social aspects of all of humanity is going to go forward. Central planners, the amount of work and expenditure, I mean, the waste of resources that they put into trying to saturate plan, it's, it's all for nothing. It's all for nothing in the long run game. They may benefit some people in the short and medium term, but in the long run, even they end up losing. Ever since the Walmart, or ever since the Wall Street crash of 1987, central banks have relentlessly, relentlessly disrupted the price system to smooth economic activity and placate financial systems. The former goal came from belief in the power of monetary activism, the latter from a view that higher asset prices can only be good for growth. <laughs> exactly. Keynesianism. Keynesianism. The tragedy is that even though both of those theories are tragically misplaced, the glo global economic establishment continues to cling to them. Despite the devastation that they keep causing, an ultra-activist monetary policy triggers immense moral hazard. Yeah! It means that the markets begin to assume that they will always be bailed out by lower interest rates or quantitative easing whenever asset prices begin to fall. Moral hazards. Moral hazards. It creates an artificial floor below prices. Traders have called this the Greenspan, Bernanke, and now the Yellen put after put option, which gives, which gives the holder the right to sell an asset at a certain minimum price. The result of all this is that the monetary policy and other regulatory interventions have badly disrupted the price system. They are not the only forces at play but they are the most powerful ones the price of risk in particular has been pushed down too low just as as just as it was for a different set of assets in 2005 and 2006 the value of equity equities including many financial stocks has gone up too much the price of prime real estate has soared to dangerous levels the value of some currencies have been distorted and the government bond yields are often irrationally low Instead of working freely as it should, the market has become distorted and corrupted, sending out misleading price signals and guaranteeing clusters of errors from investors. A failed intervention begets another failed intervention and another and another and another. This cycle has been ongoing for 25 years at least, triggering even more extreme action. None of this is novel. Ludwig, Ludwig von Mises an Austrian, another Austrian economist described earlier versions of this phenomenon in the early, early 20th century. The next step in some countries will be negative interest rates, followed by helicopter money. Central banks need to ensure that there is enough money in the economy, but they should follow simple rules to, to ensure that this happens, not seek to micromanage sentiment. The price of equities should be determined by investors interacting freely. Instead, the primary driver is now hints from the Federal Reserve forward guidance this isn't right it is bad for our long-run econ economic prosperity and very dangerous politically other markets are equally mispriced a 10-year bond yield at 0 0.0168 percent implies zero growth and zero inflation for the next decade which is nonsense investors who feel let down by central banks are fleeing equities and falling into safe havens beyond anything that can be justified through fundamental analysis this storm may yet blow over, but the economy will only be truly cured when the root cause of this of its ailment are finally addressed. Like I said, Alistair Heath, thank you for speaking truth to reason. It means so much for people that have the platform to propagate their message. It is so vitally important that you, you know, swear off the dictates and the mandates of your central planners and just speak truth to reason. It is important for people. I know a lot of people that rely on the central planning and the mysticism of, of, of government will be hurt as a result, but their hurt will be short lived and they will learn and they will benefit and they will gain the knowledge to not repeat those past mistakes. But if you allow them to continue to mire in their stupor and to continue like mindless zombies just going along uh, right no humanity is not going to flourish while you keep them docile and dominate humanity will flourish 
when you allow them, give them free will and the basis for true economic fundamentals. Watch how it plays out. Give humanity, give people back their freedoms and watch that prosperity. Watch our progress take off like a rocket. Isn't that what we all want, ultimately? Of course it is. Sigonian and Libertarian, and I love liberty. <laughs>